This is Alabasta, one of the most iconic islands in One Piece. And this is Cairo, the capital of Egypt, the ancient temple of Edfu, the gambling city of Las Vegas in the United States, traditional architecture from Mali in West Africa, the Mehranga Fort in India, and even the Taj Mahal. The epic landmarks and beautiful landscapes of four incredibly different countries from all around the world merged into one fantastic island on the Grand Line with its own unique history, culture, and people. I just can't stress enough how impressive I find this. Alabasta is a desert kingdom located halfway through the first part of the Grand Line with a history dating back to the infamous Void Century 900 years ago. At first glance, the island seems to be purely inspired by Egypt, with pyramids and deserts. But once I looked a little closer, it became clear that there is so much more going on here. Rain Diners, the large casino run by Crocodile, is a condensed version of the Luxor Hotel in Vegas. The main palace is inspired by India's most famous landmark, but the roofs have been replaced with the golden ones of the so-called Dome of the Rock, a very important Islamic shrine located located in Jerusalem. This is fitting because according to Nico Robin, it dates back over 4,000 years. The capital city Arubana to me seems to be based on this ancient rocky fort in the northwest of India that celebrates the Sacred Spirit Festival. The Tomb of Kings, the oldest part of Alabasta that concealed the Poneglyph, is the spitting image of the ancient Temple of Edfu that is particularly famous for the Edfu building texts that contain the history of the ancient kingdom of Egypt all the way back to the quote-unquote early primeval age of the gods. Damn, that's cool. I definitely want to go there someday. And how very fitting for a place that contains part of the true history of the One Piece world and its gods. <laughs> You also have characters like Pell and Chaka that have zone fruits inspired by the sacred animals of ancient Egypt, a falcon and a shakal. The king himself is named Cobra and the main antagonist is Crocodile, an animal that lives in the Nile River, which is ironic because he's the one who took away all the country's water supplies. And yet what absolutely blew my mind was that Alabasta officially is inspired by India, which I'm sorry, but I found absolutely ridiculous given all of this Egyptian influence and its name literally being a pun on the words Arab and the white stone alabaster in Japanese. But anyways, what's up? Amanu, and in case you're wondering how I know all this, there is actually an official travel guide to the One Piece world that lists a lot of the real life inspirations for all the fantastic places we visit that actually only dropped back in 2021 and that I haven't heard of for some reason until now. I actually was doing research on this topic myself when I just randomly stumbled across it halfway through. Now, I guess if you clicked on this video, you're as fascinated by the world that Eiichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, has created as much as I am. Because building a whole fictional world that feels alive and real is actually one of the most complex things you can do in storytelling. And since no one can create a whole world out of nothing, naturally, even if only subconsciously, you will adapt and incorporate some real world elements into your imaginary world as well, using them as a base of inspiration without of course copying things one to one. For me, this has two big advantages. One, it makes your world and your characters feel familiar to your audience, and two, it anchors your fiction in reality to make it feel more believable and relatable. And I think Oda-sensei, who despite barely leaving his office, is obsessed with learning about the history, geography, and culture of the world, has mastered this advanced technique to a ridiculous level. His world of islands and pirates is incredibly unique and new, but still, everything feels familiar and coherent. As I showed you with the example of Alabasta, he achieves this by taking a number of real-life inspirations from all over the world and then combines the attributes he likes into something completely new. <laughs> Good! 
So allow me to take you on a tour through the One Piece world and all its fantastic inspirations in no particular order. Some of these are based on the official book and others, let's say, educated guesses. And I want to start with Luffy's home, Dawn Island in the East Blue. <laughs> Now, most of these blue in general is inspired by Asian places. Nami's home is inspired by Indonesia, Zoro's village is inspired by Nara in Japan, and the Baratier is inspired by Vietnam's floating restaurants. This makes sense because it is literally called the East Blue, Asia being in the East. And when I looked deeper into this, it actually seemed to be the direction Oda Sensei went with the entirety of the One Piece world. The West Blue, for instance, features locations like Ohara, that is based on England, Bollywood Kingdom that is, yeah, of course, based on Hollywood, and Thriller Bark that is inspired by French Gothic architecture like the Notre Dame. So anyways, the Goa Kingdom in the East Blue also falls into this pattern because it is based on the Philippines with all its jungles and warm climates. And by the way, one of the most beautiful countries I ever had the pleasure to travel to. The rich capital and the great terminal seem to be a representation of Smoky Mountain, a giant landfill in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, where people used to live and work in heaps of garbage. Just like in One Piece, the landfill experienced devastating fires. Now, in the story, it's the nobles that purposefully want to get rid of all the poor people living there to not anger the celestial dragons coming to visit. <laughs> The capital city itself, however, seems to be based on the Indian state of Goa, India's richest region, once again contrasting the striking gap between rich and poor. Now, for Fusha Village, on the other hand, it seems like Oda Sensei drew inspiration from the English countryside, once again merging three very different countries into one. I wish I could nerd out a bit more about how awesome I found this combination, but for your sake, let's move on. This is the freaky island of Punk Hazard that not only looks like the world's largest Pokeball, but is half Mordor and half North Pole. You know, basically how my balls felt when I went into a Japanese onsen in winter. Can't recommend enough. Well, you might or might not be surprised when I tell you that there is a place like this in the real world as well. Because Iceland is pretty much a song of ice and fire as well, only that they were smart enough to stop after four seasons. With some of the most unreal and epic landscapes in the world, here hot glowing volcanic lava meets icy glaciers with only a few inhabitants. Very similar to how Punk Hazard's condition have made it a hard place to live as well. But damn, I really want to go to Iceland so, so badly. If you have any recommendations, let me know. Now, Wano, the longest arc of the entire story, is of course inspired by Japan. However, there are so ridiculously many details from real Japan hidden throughout this arc, that would probably be an entire video of its own. So let me know if you want to see that. Next, we have a place that I have enjoyed talking about a lot in my videos recently. Drum Island, home of Chopper. This island as a whole that is always covered in snow is mostly based on Northern America and the Rocky Mountain region. The iconic cone-shaped peaks are most likely inspired by the Devil's Tower in the north of Wyoming. And yeah, I know, I can't believe that's a real place either. The town of Cocoa Wheat is basically an exact copy of the Canadian city Banff. However, interestingly enough, Bighorn, the town where the Straw Hats actually arrive, appears to be inspired by the cute city of Alberobello in Italy. I wanted to say Italia, but it's, yeah, Italy. <laughs> Got lost in that Italian accent a little bit too much right now. Meanwhile, and as a German, I can't believe I missed this. Drum Castle, where Dr. Kureha 
resides is of course based on the legendary Neuschwanstein Castle in the state of Bavaria, where I'm actually from. How embarrassing. Oda-sensei really went out of his way to create a winter wonderland here, giving it that Christmassy special vibe. Before I go on to the next big one, here are a few smaller ones. Whiskey Peak is inspired by Taos in New Mexico. Twin Peaks is basically Thatcher Island, also in the US. I actually just talked about that recently in a theory about the One Piece being inside a whale-like laboon. The castle on top of the red line, Marie Joa, from where the government rules the world, is inspired by the, and I'm really sorry for slaughtering this, Chateau de Chambord? Chateau de Chambord? Chateau de Chambord? In, in, in France, as you might have guessed. A two hour car ride away from Paris. Sitch. Marie Joa. Both the real Chateau and Marie Joa have vast gardens and are just a pure statement of power and luxury. Now, interestingly enough, it is really closely connected to the French Revolution, where the revolutionary army took it away from the governing nobility. <laughs> I wonder if uh, that might become relevant in the story at some point. Zo, the giant elephant, is most likely a twist on the whale with an island on its back trope, but I believe that Oda-sensei might have seen an image of this very famous rock that looks just like an elephant off the coast of Iceland. The city of the Minx, on the other hand, is inspired by the Monument Valley in Yemen. There's also this island called the Rommel Kingdom that we see in Cavendish's flashback. His alter ego Hakuba is based on the infamous serial killer Jack the Ripper and his hometown in general is based on 19th century London, as you can clearly see. And I personally am inspired by you subscribing to the channel if you want more One Piece content like this is Amazon Lily, an empire only run by the the women of the Kuja clan, located in the calm belt where Luffy was transported by Kuma. Now, while the women themselves are clearly inspired by the legendary Amazon warriors from Greek mythology, the island itself is actually inspired by the so-called Hanging Temple in the northeast of China, close to the mountains of Mongolia. Yeah, I know, these look absolutely unreal, towering over 30 meters from the ground inside that cliff, but they are an actual place built over 1,500 years ago. And I really love how unique this combination of these two ideas is, making Amazon Lily a truly spectacular place. Then we have Dress Rosa. You might already know that this island is heavily inspired by Spain and Spanish culture, for example with Viola's tango dance. The architecture resembles that of the famous Gaudí, whose influence you can see all over Barcelona. Parque Güell in particular looks a lot like the buildings we see throughout the country under Doflamingo's rule. And just how Crocodile was inspired by an animal that is connected to Egypt, Don Quixote do Flamingo himself is a nod to both the Flamingo those living in the Spanish Salines, but also to the dance flamenco. Oh, and of course, to the famous story of Don Quixote himself. Oda-sensei actually commented the following here himself. This is my uh, Oda voice. When I took a close look at Do Flamingo and tried to think of what country would suit him, I arrived at the conclusion that it must be Spain. I have already previously mentioned that the countries of One Piece are all inspired by real-life countries in another SBS, but it's the first time I actually got feedback from the residents of such a country. Now I sometimes can be irresponsible in the way I draw and so if you do see anything that seems like a half-baked version of your culture or buildings, please forgive me. Remember, it's just a manga. <laughs> I, I wish more people would actually take the last sentence to heart. The giant Colosseum on the other hand is of course inspired by the actual Colosseum in Rome or there are actually some in ancient Greece as well. Now let's move on to my absolute favorite location in all of One Piece. Water 7. And not only because Ennis Lobby and Water 7 are my favorite arc, but also because the island itself is just absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> 
It's a floating city with canals instead of streets that is famous for its shipwrights. This city is of course heavily inspired by Venice that is also built on water and full with canals. The Venetians were also famous for their ships that they used to build a flourishing global trading empire reflected in Water 7 skill with shipbuilding as well. Now, if you ever have the chance to actually visit this place, it's just as breathtaking as it looks maybe even a bit more so. The masks of the Venetian carnival are used incredibly creatively to introduce the cypherpole agencies. CP9. The building of the Galela company that is run by Frankie's stepbrother Iceberg is inspired by the Piazza dell'Anfiteatro in the Tuscany in northern Italy. The only thing that seems to be non-Italian on Water 7 is its clear resemblance to the island Mont San... I'm just slaughtering that again. Mont San Michael? Mont San Michael? <laughs> Mont Saint-Michel Saint in the Normandy in France that, depending on the tides, is completely surrounded by water as well and strongly resembles the shape of Water 7. But let's go back to Venice for a second. Not only is the city slowly sinking into the ocean every single year, but it frequently experiences the so-called aqua alta, a phenomenon where the city is completely flooded by high tides. And so I suspect that this is the actual inspiration for the enormous Aqua Laguna, a tsunami-like wave that rolls over Water 7 every single year and causes the island to sink a little bit into the ocean. And honestly, I can't help but wonder what secrets lie beneath the surface here as well. As you know, I'm convinced that there is a much bigger and deeper secret to this stunning world of One Piece and why so much of it is underwater. For example, the connection between the Aqua Laguna and the giant hole under in this lobby. And what do devil fruits have to do with all of this? One crazy but very real possibility, for example, is that the devil fruits actually originate from a giant tree on Love Tail that is under the sea just next to Water 7. And that's why you really shouldn't ignore this video right here because it will prove to you that One Piece's world building goes way deeper than you could ever dream.